Hey, what's up guys, it's Hansel here, and welcome to another guide video. Before I get started though, I know some of you guys are going crazy thinking, what, he's Asian? Because that happens, I get that comment all the time every time I post a video with my face in it. But uh, anyways, aside from that, I just want to let you guys know I'm going to be starting a new series on my channel containing more tips and tricks on how to play Fire Mage. I know a lot of you guys want to see that. Uh, this week's video is obviously an RBG guide if you didn't know already. So if you guys have any more requests on instructional videos you'd like to see, this is going to be a weekly thing. So um, just leave the request down in the comments below. And whatever comment gets the highest votes or likes, I'll make sure to do a guide on that for next week. So anyways, this is the RBG guide for you guys. So let's get started. Hey Pyromaniacs, it's Hansel here, and due to popular request, today's video is going to be an RBG guide for Fire Mages. So I personally have been doing really well in RBGs this season. I finally found a really competitive group that runs together all the time. And for about a month, I was the rank 1 mage on the RBG ladder, which was really cool. I kind of tanked down a little bit, but I'm still well over 2400, so it's not too bad. So if you're a mage anywhere under 2200 and you want to play Fire in RBGs, I think this is a guy who could really help you out, so hopefully you stick around. So to answer all of your guys' question on why I like to play Fire and RBGs, as a generalized answer, I just like it because I just think it's more fun, like bursting people, burning them, turning them to ash. I just love it, it feels good. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, I'll go over the pros and cons of the spec. First of all, Fire has really good AoE CC with Dragon's Breath. So peeling for your healers is a piece of cake and also controlling the enemy healers at once is very good and beneficial to your team. Another good part about fire is that it has really strong burst every 30 seconds and if you play correctly you can get kills almost every 30 seconds which is very nice and uh, you're mainly the one that sets up the kills unless uh, your burst is not up. As for frost, uh, their damage is more consistent rather than bursty like fire so it's all about playstyle and whatever it, you are more comfortable with. So as for rotations, it's more of a priority order rather than rotations. So number one, it's going to be bursting with a deep freeze with hot streak. So if you do have an instant pyroblast up and your deep freeze is not on cooldown, you want to be using it as much as possible. Next up, if you don't have a hot streak, you want to get it first, obviously, before deeping. Number two, Dragon's Breath is needed. So if you see a whole bunch of enemy melee stacked together, then you want to just go in there and get a juicy Dragon's Breath in all of them. I mean, using it on cooldown is very beneficial to your team because it's a really nice AoE peel, as I said before. And number four is spreading dots with Living Bomb or Nether Tempest. So this is where your sustained damage comes in. Obviously, like I said earlier, your consistent damage as a Fire Mage sucks, but it's better to spread dots in between your burst phases rather than just doing nothing, obviously, right? So just to backtrack a little bit, burst every time you can with Deep Freeze. Uh, in between your Inferno Blast cooldowns, you want to spread dots. And if you see a whole bunch of melee stacked up or healers stacked up, you want to go in there and get a Dragon's Breath on them. It sounds pretty simple. At first it might be a little confusing and a little rough. But your main goal is to just make your combat as fluid as possible. And after time, after time passes, you will get used to it and it's not too hard. My biggest dilemma as a fire mage in RBGs would be trying to choose between Living Bomb and Nether Tempest. A good thing about Living Bomb is that it does a little bit more burst damage when it explodes compared to Nether Tempest, but Nether Tempest can go up to an unlimited amount of targets at once, whereas Living Bomb can only go up to 3 targets at once, which sucks because you have a lot of free globals in between your Inferno Blast cooldowns, so in, in between that 8 second cooldown you want to be spreading dots as much as you can. Uh, you might find yourself being stuck in combat a lot when using Nether Tempest because if it's on a target you're going to be stuck in combat because it's bouncing everywhere whereas Living Bomb you can still mount up and get out while it's still up. So my final conclusion would be that in big group fights where you know you're going to be fighting for a long time Nether Tempest would be better but uh, maps where you have to be floating a lot and just uh, running around mounted like Silver Shard Living Bomb will be better. My best bet for you would be just experiment with both of them and just find out what fits your preference better. I personally use Nether Tempest a little bit more though. 
Sometimes you'll find yourself getting a hot streak proc without having defreeze on cooldown. So try to actually throw it in. Not instead of just throwing it in, try to actually frost shot them first, then chuck it in so the pyro crits, and then spread that crit pyro dot with infernal blast to nearby targets. One thing that probably all you guys don't know, <laughs> not saying you guys are retards or anything, but I honestly didn't know until recently, is if your pyro crits and you spread it, the dot will continuously crit as well. I know like this was this really surprised me. It's amazing how this works. So frost out the target before you throw the pyro throw it in for a guaranteed crit and then use Inferno Blast to spread the crit dot to everybody while spreading Nether Tempest. So this is going to just slowly melt them and keep enemy healers on their toes. And this is how you get like top damage as Fire Mage and RPGs, which is highly unlikely but if you can pull this off you will do really good damage. Learning to use Dragon's Breath and RPGs is pretty much the main important aspect as a Fire Mage. So try to practice using this ability instead of just using it on like one target at a time. Try to save it for when they're all bunched up for the best efficient usage. As for armors, most of the time I use Molten Armor. Sometimes I'll use Frost Armor if I have a Shadow Priest in my group for more haste. That way I can actually reach the next haste breakpoint and get so many ticks when it comes to Nether Tempest. So Frost Armor is good for spreading dots, Molten Armor is good for extra crits. And as for defending, whenever you're defending a base make sure you switch to Mage Armor. This is very very important because say a mage comes out of invis and polys you and starts capping, the poly will last 5 seconds instead of 9 seconds or 8 seconds. That way you don't have to waste your trinket to stop the cap, that way you can let the poly sit out and still stop them and save your trinket for a later CC. As for add-ons, I highly suggest if you don't know already, Battleground Targets. It pretty much lays out the whole enemy team for you. And it shows their class, their spec, their name. So whenever your target color calls targets, instead of just trying to find them or having a slash assist macro, you can just see it on this list. And it's very informative, so I really like this. I like to use this over slash assist macros, personally. As for name targets, I like to use tidy plates. You can set it up so it shows enemy debuffs on top of their name plates. So it's really easy to manage who has another Tempest and who doesn't. That way you know what to dot and you know what to target next pretty much. Uh, so it's just another way of managing uh, enemy debuffs. I really like it though. Alright, hopefully this video helped you guys out. And if it did, make sure to leave a thumbs up down below to let me know you'd like to see more instructional videos. Also leave suggestions or requests down in the comments below. And whatever comment gets the highest thumbs up, I'll make sure to do a guide on that for next week. Also, if you haven't seen the beginner's guide already, I highly suggest you check that out. That's going to be the video on the left. Also, if you want to see high rated RBGs from the Fire Mage point of view, check out the video on the right. That way you can see this guide pretty much in action. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys in the next video.